Welcome back to the Mount Pleasant Dynasty. Today, Mount Pleasant is finally back at home after a five game road trip. We've got some alternate jerseys and also some top prospects visiting. Our top two prospects on our board, Ernest Harrison and Brad Hall, an athlete and tackle respectively, both three stars, both are visiting today and a good visit for them would result maybe in a commitment which would be huge for this first recruiting class. Now Mount Pleasant starts off with a give to Elton Huff on first down and he goes for nine yards. He had his first screw 100 yard game last week and hopes to continue his success this week. There's a four yard run and a first down. His backup Booker Collier is back from a sprained back. He is questionable for today's game but he should see at least some action. Collier does check in on second down and inches. He gets the carry and is down to the 49 yard line. A gain of five. Elton Huff will check back into the game as we go split shotgun. As the pitch goes outside to Collier, he has a lot of room to run and he's down to the 27 yard line. A gain of 22. Now Gimp has twin tight ends from under center. Continues to roll out throws. He's got Dorian Mays, the backup tight end, who spins his way forward for 11 yards and a first down. Our offense is looking very good and very efficient on this first drive, as here's another big run for Elton Huff. This one goes for nine yards. On second down and one, it's a pitch outside to Collier. He's inside of the five and down to the two yard line. A good outside run. Second down and goal will go outside once again. It's Elton Huff who punches it in. And it is a 7-0 lead, a four-minute drive for Mount Pleasant. Our offense looked great on that opening drive. We have a studio update. Number eight, Georgia Tech suffers their first loss as Lamar Jackson and Louisville win. Number two, Tennessee, a team that we'll be playing on later this year, does win against South Carolina. And number one, LSU loses to Old Miss. Here's a keep for Dallas Davis, who goes for 12 yards and a big-time gain. South Alabama's offense features a bunch of very talented and skilled players and a good offensive scheme. However, their starting left and right tackle will not be playing today. So we hopefully can get a little bit of pass rush on him, but outside for Josh McGee. He's got it for 25 yards. Inside of the red zone, Dallas Davis keeps it on the read option. He's inside of the 10 and down at the one yard line, a gain of 14. First down and goal, and up the middle, no resistance. It's Xavier Johnson who punches it in from one yard out, and South Alabama only takes around 30 seconds to tie this game at seven. The ensuing kickoff is DeMarcus May takes it from his own end zone. He cuts it to the outside to the 25 to the 30. The ball comes out. It's still free, and it's recovered by Buchanan of South Alabama. There is a flag down on the play, but it's clipping on Devron Blanco. So it is South Alabama football. A big time mistake as Demarcus May was also shaken up on that. So him and Ashley Waters are now both hurt. We'll have to get an update on May in a little bit. First down and 10 dumped down to Kachera. He's got it inside of the five yard line, powers his way forward to the two. So it's first down and goal once again. And this time it's Demi Ayula. He goes from three yards out and South Alabama's offense has looked great so far today. We're going to have to have our offense answer, looking like it's going to be a high-scoring barn burner today. As a loss of eight, it's Trey Alford. We've struggled with interior pass rush so far this year, and there's another sack. And now going up for the football is Ronaldo McCall, who goes for 12, but doesn't have enough for the first. The sack set us back, so now we were forced to punt, and it's Williams on the reception across the middle. He's got 20 yards. One minute left in this first quarter. South Alabama trying to set up a screen. It's nearly intercepted by Cliff Cold, the senior defensive end. So South Alabama will kick the field goal, and it is good. He absolutely killed that football. So it's a 10-point game. Under a minute left, throw outside for Kenton Watkins. He tries to juke and is not able to make anyone miss, but gains 18 on the curl route. A run outside for Alton Huffy, cups it back to the middle, goes back outside. He's got 10 yards, but just shy of that first down. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. As going down is Jonathan Gibbs once again. It's Trey Alford with his second sack of the first quarter. Now it's Alford making a play. Booker Collier, who barely is able to pick up the first. And so it is second down and seven. Collier gets another carry. He's getting a good bit of early work as he's just returning from his injury, already his seventh carry. Danny Whitmore checks in, the third string running back, 
who has impressed in his limited time with Collier out. It's now third down and four. Triple option pitch to Collier, and once again, just barely picks it up. But Jonathan Gibbs was hurt in that play, so backup Colby Lucas will check in. The sophomore quarterback pitches it to Collier, and he's got it for 10 yards. Lucas stays in on third down as we go read option, gives it to Elton Huff up the middle for seven yards. He is a little more athletic than Jonathan Gibbs, but not nearly the passer that Gibbs has proven to be. And there's a five yard run for Colby Lucas. That's nice to see. And on second down and goal, it's Huff once again, his second touchdown of the game from about the inches line. So it's now a three point ball game. Another studio update as number three has now gone down. So we've seen number three, one and eight all lose today. So definitely a shake up of the top 10 and going backwards is Xavier Johnson, a loss of five, Khalif Keenan, and on the play. We've got third down and 11 with three minutes left. Going deep, it's McGee who gets open. He's gonna go from 61 yards out. He just burned, I believe that was Markel Reyes, and takes it all the way in. Just not great coverage. Both of our starting corners don't have the greatest speed, so that's definitely a big area of concern moving forward. Here's Alden Huff, though, who cuts it back to the middle and has got three yards and a first. Hopefully our offense can answer back on this drive to end the half. As it's Huff up the gut, he has a big time lane. He runs right through it for nearly 20 yards. Next play, it's Danny Whitmore. He goes up the middle. He's got six yards this time. So it's first down and 10, a minute and a half left. Booker Collier is the running back, seeing a lot of different running backs playing today, three so far, and they're all being very productive in what we've seen. Third down and two. Throw to Harrison, he's inside of the five and down to the one yard line. He goes for 20 and it's Jonathan Gibbs. He gives to Huff and he punches it in from two yards out, not even touched. And we will cut it to a three point lead, 34 seconds left. Only 30 seconds left in this first half, but with how explosive South Alabama's offense can be, that is more than enough times they go for 20 yards there. Now on third down and nine, down the seam, it's Gerald Everett. He's open for a big gain inside of Mount Pleasant territory. Now the field goal kicker is on and once again drills the kick. So we will head into halftime down by six. South Alabama's offense will get the ball to start the second half. We've got to get them under control. A high scoring first half with neither defense really putting up much of a fight. This will be interesting to see how this second half plays out. You can see the stats from the first half. It was definitely a contrasting game. You can see 166 rushing yards and a big time of possession for us. South Alabama's dominated through the air and not really cared about time of possession in this game as there's Dallas Davis powering through Terrell Byers on third down and two. Read option for Dallas Davis. He trucks the safety, but he is able to bring him down. That was Khalif Keenan on the tackle. Mount Pleasant brings a blitz off the left as Davis cuts back that way and spins down for a seven yard gain. But Davis is shaken up so Evan Orth will come to the football game as he keeps it on the read option this time. He's inside of the red zone down after a run of 21 yards. Third down and eight give up the middle for Xavier Johnson. He only gets two yards a big time stop by Xavier Simmons. It's now a nine point ball game after the field goal. The quick dump down goes to McCall. He gets one block and picks up a first down on a 13 yard reception. Trips to the left is play action for Jonathan Gibbs or at least he pump fakes to the outside and ends up getting sacked for a loss of eight. On third down and 21, Gibbs will not be able to get the pass away. He's hit as he throws and that pass goes nowhere. So it's a three and out for Mount Pleasant. Now it's Kavika Watts on the interception. He just read the screen perfectly, stood there, and was able to catch it. A mistake by Orth. Now on third down and three, it is Kenton Watkins who only gets two yards. He had the first down, but he cut up field at a weird angle, and that cost him the first. So instead, Mount Pleasant will kick the field goal, and it's back to a six-point game. As there's a good defensive stop by LaRue Banks, a loss of four for Johnson. Second down and 14 offset shotgun. Orth's going to take off and run with the football, and he got around five yards. So third down and nine. Orth drops back. 
He scans the field, finds his man Gerald Everett, and he picks up the first at 13 yard reception. First down and 10 for this Jaguars offense, as it's Orth who takes off once again, he's really showing off some nice athletic ability. Third down and four, the drop play works to perfection, and still going is Dami Ayula. He got 16 yards on that carry. An offset shotgun, Orth's gonna run once again. He's inside of the 10, he breaks a tackle, and he's down at the two yard line. He might be showing that he's a better runner than Dallas Davis was. And on the next play, once again, Evan Orth, he is just showing out on that drive. And that was a great drive by South Alabama to answer back and make it a two-score lead once again. As here's Elton Huff for 12 yards, he is performing very well. Coming off his 100-yard performance last week, he's followed it up this week with another big-time game. As there's a pitch to the outside for Huff for 8 yards as he nears 100 yards on the day. Third down and 9. Throw, it's nearly intercepted, looking for Ricky Barrett up the seam, but did not put enough air under it, so instead it's a stop for South Alabama, but then it's a sack for Bruce Elbert, a big play, so second down and 13. Orth tries to escape, breaks one tackle, can't get away from Blake Cotton, and another defender. It's now third down and 21, you have to get a stop here, you can't allow a first, as the throw, it's intercepted by Markel Reyes. He's going to take it back. He's inside of the 35 and down to the 30-yard line. An arm punt of sorts as that ball was just thrown up in the air and Reyes was able to just sit right under it and followed it up with a great return. So now we'll start off this drive with a give right up the gut for Elton Huff. That one goes for 7 yards. Now at 120 yards in the game. His second straight 100-yard rushing game in the second of his career. Now it's McCall. He's into the open field. He's going to take it from 23 yards out. And it's back to a 6-point ball game. The interception sets us up perfectly. And now hopefully our defense can come up with another stop. As here's a great way to start off this drive. Cliff Cole on the stop. Third down and 14. Setting up a screen pass, he got to contain, and we do just that, only giving up seven yards. So our offense takes back over the chance to recapture the lead, and that's not the way you want this drive to go. It's Trey Alford once again for his third sack of the day. That's a school record for South Alabama. He is just dominating this game on defense. Now on third down and 18, Gibbs will roll out to his right. He might run with it. No, he's going to throw it. He's got his man Harrison for 20 yards. What a play by Jonathan Gibbs. Now it's Booker Collier for three yards and a first. If you want to go get a second look at that play, I don't blame you. Looking like he was going to run the ball. Gibbs throws on the run for the first. And now it's Booker Collier picking up his own on the inside run. Third down and six throw, and Harrison can't make the catch. So this is the ball game. Fourth down and six, Jonathan Gibbs from the shotgun. He goes to the end zone. He's got his man McCall 16 yards out, and the extra point will give us the lead. Here is Nate Perry, and the sophomore kicker nails it, and it is now a one-point Mount Pleasant lead. Still a minute left on the clock, though. A quick dump down to Kachera. He's got it for a gain. He's still fighting for it. Picks up some extra yardage. A gain of 17. Still a lot of time left on this clock. As now Orth is going to go deep. And diving for it is Josh McGee. He's got it for 33 yards. Now close to field goal range. Evan Orth to the outside. He's got his man Tyrone Williams for 17. It's goal to go. 15 seconds left. Johnson up the middle on the draw play. He goes for seven yards and now going for two to take a touchdown lead and stopped in the backfield. It's Cliff Cole. It took South Alabama less than a minute to score. We've only got 10 seconds and going down is Jonathan Gibbs. It's Trey Alford once more his fourth sack. Second down and 18 and Jonathan Gibbs again. Alford's now got five sacks in this game. Third down and 26. Just going to throw it deep. This is the last play of the game. And diving for it is Harrison. If he doesn't have to dive, he might have gone all the way. Instead, South Alabama and Trey Alford will get the victory. Along with Evan Orth, who stepped up big. We scored the go-ahead touchdown. I thought that was going to do it. We left 
too much time left on the clock. South Alabama dominated our defense throughout the entire game, especially on that final drive. Our running game was a big story. Another 100-yard game for Allen Huff, 88 yards for Booker Collier, Allen Harrison, and Renato McCall, the two receivers who stood out. But another one of the big stories was the constant pressure it seemed like Jonathan Gibbs was under. He was sacked six times in this game, five times by Trey Alford. Four of those were given up by our right guard, Kelvin Williams. But you can't dwell on a loss like that. It's a heartbreaking loss, but you just have to keep moving forward. Now, one and six on the season. Our next opponent is the 0 and seven Wake Forest Demon Deacons. You can see they've lost to a number of very good teams. Five of their losses, or four of their losses actually, have come against ranked teams. They do have some injuries with their right guard and right tackle being hurt. Their middle linebacker and starting quarterback John Walford most likely will play. So we look at the stats for Wake Forest in terms of their quarterbacks. All of their quarterbacks have been struggling very mightily so far this year. Demarcus May, who was hurt on that kickoff where he fumbled, will be out for three weeks. So a big loss, just really in kick return, but Ashley Waters will be back for this game. So it's not too devastating of an injury, but we do pick up two commitments. Eric Moore, an outside linebacker. He's a great athlete, not much else. Then you have three-star Brad Hall, who we actually beat out the University of South Carolina for. He's strong, a good balanced blocker, and probably will be a year one starter for us, depending on how everyone else progresses on our team. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, please leave a like down below. It's a disappointing game. It's one that you would love to win. But with a team like this, it's hard to win a lot of games. And just being in games like that really shows progress to me. We haven't had a ton of games like that. And our team continuing to fight was great to see. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like down below. Leave your comments on the game down below. Any thoughts on our two commitments we got this week? I will see you for week nine in the next couple of days. Because I'm out.